Shadow Secretary to the Treasury. Pat McFadden is here, he would say that, though, wouldn't he? I'm guessing you'd say the same. He's right, because what we've been witnessing in the last few days is a, a festival of irresponsibility, where one Tory leadership candidate after another has been promising tens of billions of pounds in unfunded tax cuts. And there's only two ways in the end that they can fund those. One is by much more borrowing, and the other, which is where they really want to get to, as the Chancellor uh, himself has said, is 20% cuts in departmental spending. Now, when we've got 6.5 million people waiting for NHS care, we've got a generation of school children who need help to catch up from the education loss during the pandemic. We've got victims of crime waiting years to get access to justice in the courts. Just think what that level of cuts would mean. And that is the agenda which, one by one, the candidates are setting out. You know, it's not about cuts in the services, it's about cuts, they would say, in the flab, in the day-to-day -day running of the departments. They can't achieve the well, level of tax cuts they they're, they're talking about. It. But the depart, you know, the Chancellor himself, the current Chancellor, has said he wants to get to 20% in departmental uh, cuts. You can't do that just by getting rid of flab. He says he's costed it in, got in the education a... department. Let me just finish. In the education department, and he's confident that he could do it with other departments as well. Well, if you look at the education department that he was running, we haven't even reached the level of investment in pupils that we had 12 years ago when this government came to power. So I don't think his record in education gives us hope for what he would do if he became Prime Minister. Um, what do you make of the suggestions that... Um, I want to come to the vote of no confidence in just a second, but Rishi Sunak being a socialist? Uh, no, I don't think he's a socialist, but what he is, he, unlike the other candidates, is a, a candidate with a recent record, and that recent record is a number of tax rises, including a breach in the manifesto on which they were elected. Uh, we're the only country in the G7 to be putting up taxes this year. You're and criticising what's them for tax rises really... and then criticising them for trying to do tax cuts. Which no, one do you want? What, what I want is responsible budget making and a long-term plan for growth. And when you stand back from this leadership contest and you look at the debate, the thing that strikes you is the superficial nature of it. The biggest problem facing this country is lack of long-term economic growth. There's a major report out today from the Resolution Foundation showing that middle-income families in the UK are now over £8,000 a year less well-off than comparable families in countries like France, Germany and the Netherlands. That wasn't always the case. It wasn't the case at the start of the century, but it's a product of 12 long years of anemic economic growth under the Tories. That's the big challenge facing the country and it's the thing that's completely missing from this Dutch auction of unfunded tax cut pledges. Whatever you say, there's still another couple of years of this government, uh, at least. You went for a vote of uh, confidence in the Prime Minister uh, yesterday, wanted one, you didn't uh, get one, and you're very cross about it. Well, look, uh, it's usually open to oppositions to table a vote of no confidence. Uh, I suspect Boris Johnson would say that only matters to MPs. You know, his, ca his calculation is always cynicism about these things. But we felt it was right when his own ministers have obviously lost confidence in him. Most of his own MPs have lost confidence in him. That's why he's had to resign in the first place. And even since his resignation was announced, there have been more revelations about uh, unauthorised meetings with ex-KGB agent Alexander Lebedev, not when a he was, real not risk. When he was the Prime Minister, just a, to point when out. he was Foreign Secretary, yeah. a real risk to our national security. Another story about trying to get a job for someone he was in some sort of relationship Allegedly. with. Allegedly, can we just throw that in uh, there, please? Uh, and uh, we cannot allow this man to just continue with no accountability for another two months in office. That's why we tabled the motion, and he's clearly running scared of it. Well, he's not, though, is he? Because he's he's not. You could say running scared. He could say, no, nah, not gonna. Well, he's done that. And he's that. not going to. And, and as a it, result, there's not it, much you can do about it. Unless you have a vote of no confidence in the government. And you're not going to do that because you'll lose. We write our own motions. We don't take dictation from the Tory party. He clearly didn't want to allow Parliament to have this vote. And that makes it all the worse that he will continue for another two months in office, despite the repeated scandals, the repeated lies, and the record that, you know, the degradation of the office 
that has been epitomised by his time and in power. And there's not a thing you can do about it which um, tells my viewers everything they need to know about the strength of the Labour Party at the moment. Well, the parliamentary arithmetic is what it is, uh, but we will keep pushing our alternative and the voters themselves will get to decide the choice when the time comes. Oh, yeah, but that's two years away. What about a vote of uh, no confidence in the government? Well, as I say, we write our own motions. We've tabled a vote of no confidence. They've ruled it out of order. Uh, you know, that's the motion we table. We're not going to take dictation on exactly what the motion says from the Conservative Party. Um, in the meantime, which of the eight remaining candidates could Labour most do business with until you feel that you're on the other, should be on the other side of the House? It's for the Conservative Party to uh, choose its own leader. We will, uh, you know take that result, uh, we will fight the next election against whoever uh, they decide. But my overall reflection on the contest, as I said, is that the debate they're having is too small for the countries, uh, the problems that the country faces. It's not just about a little auction on who's got the biggest tax cut. It's about how we make this country more prosperous for the long term and how we make its people more prosperous. And that's what's missing from this debate. Are you not naming one because you think it'll be a kiss of death for them? No, it's a matter for them. I don't care who they pick because uh, we've got our own leader, we've got our own programme, that's what we'll fight on. It's up to the Tory party who they pick. Whoever they pick will not be able to escape 12 long years in power, 12 years of anaemic growth and the impact that's had on our public services and on people's standard of living. Good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thank programme. You.